Gotta be asked, favourite moment in all of Prison Break? It's when T-Bag gets a robot hand. Yeah, T-Bag gets a robot hand. <laughs> Prison Break is a show carried on the broad, rippling shoulders of its principal cast, the majority of whom are bald-headed, buff dudes with unnaturally piercing eyes. Oddly though, one of those guys actually only got the job because of a haircut. So it's got to be one of the main two guys, which one is it? It's Dominic Purcell, who prior to appearing in Prison Break was a journeyman actor mostly only really known for appearing in the third and angry shittiest Blade movie, Blade 3, Trinity. Blade. Ready to die. Was born ready, motherfucker. So before we continue, we have to address the leather-clad sunglasses-wearing elephant in the room, that is Blade 3 Trinity, because that movie is, like, infamous for being god-awful. So, Brad, what is your favourite moment of Blade 3? Well, I, I think I'll put forward the, uh, the amazing scene where Dracula, king Dominic of the vampires, per yeah, Dominic, Dominic Purcell. Purcell, decides to have a look at some of the dildos shaped like vampires. We've got just about anything. Even vampire vibrators. I forgot that was a scene in the movie. I was going to say the fact that apparently behind the scenes it was such a clusterfuck that Wesley Snipes refused to say any of his lines because he was so stoned. And he apparently, like David Goya, I think he was the director or the writer, whoever it was, he said, yeah. Wesley Snipes got so pissed off with me, he threatened to strangle me, and then only communicated exclusively by a little post-it note, all signed from Blade. <laughs> it was the famous moment where he was told, open your eyes for this scene, Joey awakens as Blade, and just Wesley Snipes went, no. And the director went, fuck it, I'm gonna spend a million dollars CGIing some eyes on. And apparently, um, because obviously Ryan Reynolds is in that movie, Ryan Reynolds obviously is really famous for his improvisational skill, and because Wesley Snipes was so stoned, all he did was just record for like 10 minutes straight, and then just cut to like a reaction shot of Wesley Snipes with his sunglasses on just dead. <laughs> like some Weekend at Bernie's shit. It's actually been a few weeks since I've done a Photoshop for you. Oh my god. So, I, I've just got up the Weekend at Bernie's poster. Oh man, please, can you CGI? People don't, like, people might not know what Weekend at Bernie's is. It's a famous, like, comedy movie from, like, a few decades ago. Where a guy just dies, and they just put a big pair of comedy sunglasses on him and pretend he's not dead. Yeah, I think it's that there's two employees of his that want to stay at his summer house, yeah. or something like that. But oh. yeah, so there's three people on that poster, obviously. Yeah. Bernie is now going to be Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Who would you like the other two to be? Ryan Reynolds and the girl who hunts listening to an iPod. <laughs> because that is the most ridiculous aspect of that. We are like, people that have not seen Blade 3, it's like Ryan Reynolds and some other fucker are hunting vampires. And to make it all edgy and cool, one of the characters listens to an iPod while she hunts vampires. I'm going to willingly cut off one of my most useful sensors for fighting enemies that exist exclusively in the dark. Although I do think that movie has got one of perhaps Ryan Reynolds' greatest jokes when he kicks his way into the room to rescue Blade and he just has a little name tag on that says, hello, my name is Fuck You. So let's divert a little bit away from Blade. Yeah, no, because some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Align that. Fun fact, was an actual real line Wesley Snipes said on the phone and the writers of Blade 1 heard him say it and wrote it into the script. Carl. That's a true fact. Okay, I'll stop talking about Blade. Yeah, it's been like seven or eight minutes. Yeah, okay, I'll stop talking about Blade. Let's Dominic talk, Purcell. Let's talk more about Dominic Purcell. So, prior to Blade 3, um, he was mostly known for appearing on a bunch of like really shitty like shows for Fox, which allowed him to like establish what's been described as an amiable relationship with the network. So amiable, in fact, apparently they just sent him a copy of the script while he was like surfing in Hawaii. So, struggling actor, yes, but surfing in Hawaii. Oh, I should point out that at the time, uh, Dominic Purcell was working on a short-lived soap opera called North Shore set in Hawaii, which is why he was there at the time when Fox sent him that script. Um, North Shore is mostly notable 
for being so shit it only had 21 episodes and ended on a cliffhanger that no one cared about and was genuinely noted by one critic as being better to watch with the sound turned off. Well, just because it was so bad you didn't want to hear anything? No, because the only redeeming feature of the show is that it stars a near-constantly shirtless pre-Aquaman, Jason Momoa. Oh. Yeah. So you have the picture of Purcell at the time in front of you, don't you, Brad? I do, yeah. Does that to you look like a hardened criminal? Other hardened criminals cower in fear from? He looks like a member of a 90s punk band. He does. He looks like a member of like an NSYNC cover band. <laughs> it's so bad. And obviously, like, him looking like this was an issue for the guy who was like, you know, the creator of Prison Break, Paul Schering, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who said, like, I don't really share Fox's enthusiasm for casting this actor in a lead role because he just looks, in his own words, like a pretty boy. Oh my god. What? You are so arrogant. <laughs> so Schering just really didn't like Purcell. He did like his acting, he just didn't like the way he looked. And he's he was expressed frustration at the fact initially that yeah, I saw like demo reels of this guy and he's a great actor and I thought he would be a good fit for the part if he didn't look like such a douchebag. So if he didn't like him, why did Purcell end up getting the job? Because they had nobody else they could bring in on short notice. Because they cast Lincoln Burroughs, you know, the character the entire first season of Prison Bait revolves around, a week before they started shooting. How did Wentworth Miller get the job? Um, because he's fucking awesome and he's Wentworth Miller. Cool. And, and then eyes. <laughs> have, you, have you seen... Those eyes. Like Wentworth Miller's got those Cillian Murphy eyes. And if people don't know what that reference is, Cillian Murphy apparently has such nice eyes that when he appears in movies, like directors sometimes like yell cut to go look at his eyes. And apparently that kept happening on the set of Batman Begins when he plays Scarecrow. And whenever he took the mask off, people would be taken aback by like, the beauty of his eyes. Joking aside, for anyone curious about how Wentworth Miller did get the role of Michael Schofield in Prison Break, the story goes that, like with Purcell, Shuring wasn't initially keen on hiring him until he turned up to physically audition, and he owned the role so hard, he immediately told everyone else to go home. So yeah, there's, there's your question answer, Brad. That's how Wentworth Miller got the role. He, like I said, he's a fucking good actor and Dem Eyes. I, I, I think they was working in tandem. Yeah. The eyes and the acting. So just so we're on the same page here, yes. the two main actors, Wentworth Miller and Donna Purcell, yes. were both actors that the creator of the show didn't want. Yeah. And he didn't feel like they would suit the role, until obviously Wentworth Miller turned up an audition, but Dominic Purcell, like I mentioned, was in Hawaii when he got sent the script, and there was a week to find, like, you know, a Lincoln Burroughs. So throwing caution to the wind, showing like, fuck it, I need a Lincoln Burroughs. Like, Purcell's a good actor, we'll try and make it work, and hired him. And what Purcell did, he'd, apparently in an interview, he said, I saw the writing on the wall with North Shore. I knew that show was not going to like, succeed. So what I did is I scrubbed off all my fake tan and shaved my head to make myself look more, you know, more like a hardened criminal. And he turned up to his first day of filming looking like someone had carved a gorilla out of alabaster. And the director apparently just dropped whatever he was doing and went, wow. Because he looked almost identical to Wentworth Miller. Because they're supposed to be brothers in the show. I suppose they do look alike. Enough to pass as brothers in a TV show, yeah. which Shuring credits as one of the reasons the show was such a success. And he describes casting randomly Purcell and Wentworth Miller on a whim, and the fact they both ended up looking so physically similar when obviously Purcell had shaved his head as bottling lightning. And critics for the show allowed it as one of like, you know, the best parts of it, because you believe them as brothers because they physically resemble each other so much. And yeah. That never would have happened if, like, Shuring one hadn't taken a chance on Purcell, and two, Purcell hadn't, like, you know, thought maybe this prison show is gonna be more successful than this one where I walk around with my shirt off next to Aquaman and shaved his head and scrubbed off his fake tan. So Prison Break succeeded almost entirely because of that bizarre confluence of events and Purcell getting a fucking haircut. Prison Break is a series with Chris Redfield and Dracula trying to break out of prison. When you put it like that, it sounds like the most awesome series ever. But 
it just goes to shit so fast. Like that first series is so good and it had so much promise and I loved it just to end there. And I like the ambiguity of did they escape or did they not? And then by the fifth season, like I mentioned again, Teabag gets a robot hand. Right? And fuck it, I'm going to spoil the ending to one of the seasons because this show doesn't deserve your time because it goes so bad so quick. Season four, like the final season supposedly of Prison Break, ends by smash cutting to like Michael Schofield's tombstone. Because he <laughs> dies of like super future cancer after having like magic brain surgery like by some shady government organisation. It's ridiculous. Like it ends with like everyone all happy walking around like, oh yeah, we won. We finally escaped. We've got all this money. We're living our life. And it's like smash cut, Michael Schofield, he dies. And then they do the final break to retcon yeah, it. Yeah, basically a film. Yeah, a film that shows Michael Schofield breaking his wife out of prison. Because apparently everything in Prison Break got revolved around prison breaks. And he just explodes himself on an electrical generator. But he didn't. No, but he didn't. Because, because in season, season five, five. <laughs> he comes back again. And apparently he gets hired by some like shady terrorists to break people out of prisons around the world. And after that point, you know, and then T-Bag gets a robot hand. And I think at the moment, they basically created a turbo child molester. I'm like, no, <laughs> this show does not deserve my time. So I watched from season one to season five in like the space of a week. So it was on Netflix. And you, I went, you forget how bad T-Bag is when you've been watching like the seasons yeah, so because, far apart. Because Robert Nepp is such a good actor. You're like, you, you're drawn to him. He's such a good fucking... Then at the beginning, like, they say, oh yeah, you're like, he's a murderer, he's a rapist. <laughs> He's super racist. Yeah. <laughs> and they just give him a robot hand. This show goes from the first season and Michael Schofield drilling through a four foot thick concrete wall with an egg whisk to smash cut to five, five seasons later, robot hand. Do you reckon Prison Break would have been just as successful if Dominic Purcell had turned up with a full tan and that haircut? No. It could have been that if Purcell hadn't, like I said then, just seen the writing on the wall with North Shore and decided that this show's not going anywhere. I'm going to commit to this prison show and decide to make himself look a bit more gruff by shaving his head, scrubbing off his fake tan, like hitting the gym a bit more and all that sort of thing. Well, they'd already hired him. So yeah. it wasn't like... if he That's had... the thing. He could have turned up on day one looking like he did in North Shore and it would have fucking ruined the show because you would never have believed him to be a hardened criminal. And the fact that he did do that and it's something so simple but at the same time, this minor little change was enough to like, you know, push the show from being mediocre to being awesome. Because then as well, obviously, his resemblance to Wentworth Miller became more apparent. And then critics are like, man, they, they do look like brothers, like, even though they don't. I don't think they look like brothers. Like, brothers don't look alike. I don't look anything like my fucking brother, but it's fine. I, I look a bit like mine, if I'm, like, when I was thinner and from... I, I, look, I look a lot like my uh, milkman, though, so... Hey. 